Unemployed and Afraid acknowledges the traditional owners of the land we have recorded this episode on and of the land where you, the listener, are tuning in from. We would like to pay our respects to Elders past, present and extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today, acknowledging that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Unemployed and Afraid a podcast that explores the messy middle of being out on your own and starting over with the people who've done it. I'm your host, Kim Curtin. Thank you for being here. Let's get into today's story of starting over. Welcome back to Unemployed and Afraid. It is a joy to have you here to chat about the glorious mess that is starting and running a brand and a business. I am feeling very deep in this journey with you right now, deeper than usual, if that's possible, with some big ambitions and a lot of self-doubt kicking around at the moment. I don't know, maybe it's the time of the year, but it just gets a little bit harder sometimes. So, you know, I thought, why not do a little solo ep this week? Just you and me, one-on-one, to share some thoughts on some of the challenges that I'm facing right now on this business journey and some reflections on what I've learned over the last year of bringing you this podcast. Yes, that's the other thing. At the time of the release of this episode, it is one full year since I launched my pod baby, Unemployed and Afraid, into the world. Wow, <laughs> it just blows my mind even saying it out loud, but 45 episodes, 70 odd hours spent in conversation with some incredibly inspiring humans about their journey in this world of working for yourself. I'm totally shook that that's, that that's happened. But look, normally I start this episode with a little bit of a bio about my guest. So given that I am my guest, but you are listening, I will attempt to give you a little bit of a bio about myself. So hi, I'm Kim Curtin, host of the podcast, Unemployed and Afraid, where we explore the glorious mess of creating brands, businesses, and career do-overs with the people in it. I'm also a creative strategist a content marketer, a writer, a yoga teacher, a sometimes ceramicist, plant-based foodie, a huge rev head, and a pug mum to a glorious little pug named Ruby Lou. Before all that, I spent 13 years in the radio business in branded content, sales, and leadership. My random mix of passions evolved during a two-year career sabbatical, which I took January 2020, not realizing that COVID was happening, which uh, you know I took after some pretty big years in my media career. I recognized that I wasn't myself at the time. They felt like there was something wrong, like I, I just needed to reconnect to myself. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but it was something I just knew I had to do and I had to try something new. It was the best and the scariest thing I ever did. It led me to some pretty crazy journeys, which certainly haven't finished yet, but yeah, definitely scary. I'm a proud multi-hyphenate and I really do believe there's a magic in following your curiosity, in expressing yourself creatively and in continuously evolving. We always love to keep them guessing, don't we? That said, change and following a path unknown can be really tough. So I do what I can to connect and learn from others and share those learnings widely to support people on a similar journey. So there is the bio. Now, I started this podcast in December 2021 on a mission to connect with brave people who were following their instincts to create their own career because that was where I was at. I wanted to know how people were managing building businesses and brands around something that excited them. I wanted to know not just the successes that they experienced, the I was doing this, had a bit of, you know, messy stuff going on, but look, ta-da, now now I'm doing this and look at all my success. I wanted to stay in that middle space and hold space for them to talk about and so that we could learn about their challenges discuss what real risk feels like, whether it's calculated or whether it's proper jump off the edge risk, no matter what kind of risk, the fear that that induces, the self-doubt that they experience, starting something and then wanting to change it, wanting to pivot and completely rebuild and reinvent yourself. How do you go about that? Does does everyone feel awkward in self-promotion? You know, all, all of these inevitable hurdles that I wanted to talk about, I wanted to hold space for, for people to explore because I knew that I wanted to create my own brands, brands, plural, businesses, plural, and I wanted to work for myself on things that I'm excited and challenged by. And I'm still feeling all of these things. I still want to know more. And I'm always feeling the awkward sense of self being exposed in the things that you create or that desperate need to want to explain what you do in a very short bio. And all of the challenges are just, just endless. And I thought that there were going to be plenty of people out there that might be feeling the same. Thankfully, I was right. I'm so grateful for your ears and for people who listen every week and reach out and 
leave reviews. Oh God, I can't tell you how much I love it. I think I've said it about a million times in this podcast, but I freaking love reviews so much. It brings a tear to my eye every single time. If I get an email, if I get a DM, if it's helping you and you tell me about it, oh my God, I just literally lose my shit. <laughs> so gratefully, there's a lot of other people out there who are enjoying this podcast. So I learn a lot in every interview and your feedback and your encouragement and your own stories of personal growth really just give me the energy to keep going. I created this podcast, which you know, I love and, and I know you do too, but total real talk, I have a really hard time having the confidence to properly back it, and which is something that I thought it might be nice to, to share with you today. This is the funniest thing. You know, I have a really hard time pushing myself to pay to advertise the podcast. It's like I don't believe that it deserves a place for some reason. Investing in, in having someone to help me with things like editing and all that backend admin stuff, which like some weeks, honestly, I feel like I, like I actually it might be mid-editing and I'll just have a little cry because <laughs> I'm so tired or I've got other stuff going on, but I don't want to let myself down and not do it. So, you know, I push myself really, really hard to keep it going and to do all of the things and to do it all of myself. It's full startup mode, right? It's like I've got heaps of cash to splash around just helping, getting someone to help me edit or, or anything like that. You know, I had even had a hard time considering what I need to do to approach possible brands to partner with me on this podcast. I mean, like, despite the fact that I've spent 13 years in selling audio, essentially, I haven't been able to do that for myself. I mean, like, that just kills me. That one cuts so deep. You know, this is, you are a beautiful, beautiful audience and there's lots of wonderful brands out there. Naturally, it would only be a brand that I feel really aligns, but who could connect with you as an audience so well and so naturally, but I just haven't had the confidence to do that. I mean, maybe I'm scared that if I do that, you would like the podcast less, but don't worry, we're not about to end up with some crappy yelly advertising in this podcast anytime soon. But look, not going to lie, a little bit of cash to keep us going, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I've even had to rally myself to talk about this podcast on my own social channels, like my, my personal with my friends, because you know, naturally you get the odd comment about, oh, you know, God, you're doing so much. I feel like you're always talking about your podcast in my feed or, oh, what are you doing now? Like what's happening? And it's so casual and doesn't mean anything, but I love to overthink it, particularly at three o'clock in the morning. It really makes me doubt myself every time I want to share something or the subtle unfollow that, oh, I love that one. That one really stings. If you've had that, I feel you. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to just remember everybody is focused on what's right in front of them. It's never personal. Maybe it's personal, but who knows? I've beaten myself up endlessly as I know the audio quality of this podcast could be improved. And I have many a person in my network that could help me. And I know it's far from perfect, but you know, it's all that stuff that holds you back to and stops you from doubling down on all of the above and, and growing a podcast or growing your brand, growing anything. But there's something just driving me to keep it all going. I love it. And there's an energy behind it that I can't quite explain. And I wonder if you've had that experience yourself where you're, you're doing something and you know, logically, there's a lot of reasons why it would be easy to outsource everything and having less love in it or stopping it completely if it's feeling like it's too much. But it's just something that drives you to keep going. And I, and I have that. It is a passion doing this. It's a, it's a lot of fun, despite the challenges that I have to face going through it. It's something that I feel compelled to continue doing. And maybe, yeah, you've had that experience too. But it's like my guest last week, Mason Taylor from Superfeast, who I'm like super fan of, just incredible thinking, deep thinking and really profound insights. He said, you just got to be like the those little bees, right? You just got to keep following that nectar. No expectations. So I'm just going to keep following that sweet, sugary goodness. And I hope you're doing the same. And you'd think that given the sheer volumes of hours I spend talking about overcoming challenges that I'd be nailing it. But as you can probably hear, it's a work in progress. I have learned an awful lot from our guests and I hope you have too. Some of the bangers that have been playing on my mind at the moment is that really everybody feels a level of awkwardness about self-promotion. I mean, even those people that are super confident, there's those little things, maybe it's not the best production quality or blah, blah, blah. Everyone feels a little bit awkward about this shit, but it is absolutely necessary. And what I've learned is the key is to not overcook it or overcomplicate it and to use what's at your fingertips, your entire network and all of the platforms that you're on as a start point. There's probably people in your network that you don't even realize are cheering you on from the sidelines. If you don't tell them, I mean, they're tickling, you're not going to know, but you'll be surprised at what you can uncover when you just start sharing your work and not being too concerned about the feedback or about whether or not it's actually landing, just putting it out there from a place of love. And all of those platforms that you're probably on are a start point, Pinterest, LinkedIn, TikTok, Insta, Facebook, all of the things. 
get a brief Google or YouTube education on how to use these and why to use these platforms and just go for it. See what works and keep on tweaking. Just whatever you do, don't go quiet for too long. Put yourself out there. You really deserve to be heard. If you're building an audience, if you feel awkward about the fact that you've got a small audience or anything like that, you know, look, at, look to partner with aligned brands to help you out there or aligned people. Ask them, just ask them if they'd consider sharing your work, maybe you know, sharing an exchange, even if you don't feel confident about the audience you have. Just see what opportunity there is to, to align with people. Sometimes it may cost money. Sometimes it may not. But you just got to stop worrying about achieving those big numbers as a sign of success and just furthering your network and continuing to grow in that engaged, natural way. And having that engaged audience is so much better than having hundreds of thousands of followers that don't really give a shit about what you're doing. Another one that I absolutely love at the moment, I've actually got this written on my desk so that I can look at it every day for when I'm absolutely churning my wheels, being overwhelmed with not wanting to start, but also not wanting to stop is that action creates information. And just to start by doing whatever is possible, whatever's in front of you right now. And I really believe you don't have to know every single action before you start. Now, ironically, this is the very thing that holds me back. I think I have to have a big plan before I go ahead. You know, where's my content strategy for everything I'm going to share on social is really ironic, given I'm a content marketer that I don't have that. But I keep thinking I have to have everything mapped out. I know how it's going to go before I start. But just by starting, you create more information than you could have ever logically planned for. So action creates information. It's my favorite one. I'm probably mere weeks away from getting this tattooed on my head so I can see it in the mirror. Got another one I absolutely love. This one came to me recently in a conversation with someone who just continues to inspire me every day, but that was be your own inspiration. Be inspired by the goals that you're setting and the progress you're making. And like this quite seriously might look like blocking accounts, those accounts on socials, you know, those ones that you compare yourself to constantly and even generally just not looking at anybody else's socials. I've just got to let that land for a minute. Someone said this to me the other day, like, I don't actually look at anybody else's stories. And immediately I thought about my own behavior and I was like, oh my God, how do you go on the platform and not look at people's stories? But yeah, they said to me, I, I want to be obsessed with, with my own work and what I'm putting out there. And because if I look at everybody else's, I'm going to naturally implicitly not, not realizing I'm going to be comparing myself. And so that be your own inspiration by just loving yourself sick and putting yourself out there as often as you can. I just, it's a like total revelation for me. This might be something that you're all up for, but massive revelation for me. So yeah, that might look like not looking at anybody's gear, not looking at those platforms that make you feel a bit shit about yourself. It might look like journaling on the daily and reflecting on the progress that you're making. And all of that is just that little forward motion no matter how tiny, no matter how insignificant you might feel, reflecting on your own progress that you're making is a way to be your own inspiration. There's little things that are going to break you from time to time. And that's one that I've been thinking about a lot. Sometimes you feel ridiculous at the things that can just derail you, but sometimes you you can take setbacks or you can take challenges and then there'll be something that will happen, just a little thing. And when you feel that and you feel broken, it's really important to just let yourself feel it. You know, I try so hard to hustle past the challenges and be, you know, suck it up. It's going to be fine. Keep working, keep working. Sometimes I'm so tired during the day and I'm like, oh, it's fine. Like I don't really have time to be tired today. I'll just work through the tiredness. And ironically, I work for a couple of hours and yeah, I tend tend to lift. But I think, well, how much better would I have just been if I just actually took a nap? And not a nap where I can scroll on my phone and write down ideas in my notes section or listen to a podcast. I mean, if you want to take a break and listen to my podcast, I'm certainly not going to be mad at that. But, you know, trying not to actually be productive in my rest would make me feel a lot better. So there's that old adage where if it's not going to matter in five years, don't give it any more than five minutes or maybe five hours of your time. And I just love that. So I'm trying really, really hard that when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm just going to shut down and Netflix or shut down and sleep until I'm ready to face the world again and not feel shit about it. Because at the end of the day, I don't need to be in a rush to achieve all the millions of goals that I want to achieve and neither do you. And maybe from pulling back just a little bit and letting go of the tight hold of success and productivity that you're pushing with, maybe you will actually come a little faster than you realize. That's that's something that I've noticed. When I chill a little bit, things move quicker. So How's the irony of that one? So there's some of the things that I'm applying at the moment for myself, all the things that I've learned from wonderful guests over the last year. The other is prioritizing my sleep. It is just the most important thing. And it's really hard and somewhat impossible to turn off when your to-do list is never done. 
which, I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing in a lot of roles when you work for somebody else too, but particularly when it's for yourself, because you feel like the difference between you being a success and you being a failure is, is how much you can get done. And, and that to-do list is just literally never going to end when you're doing your own thing. You're always going to have more ideas. You're always going to have more opportunities. You're always going to have more things to do so that you feel like you're doing things properly, but prioritizing your sleep and setting it like it's a job. So tasking it down, picking a time of the day when you like, right, that's it. I'm going to bed. For me, my phone goes onto that sleep mode at nine o'clock. It's a little prompter and a reminder to wind down, start the get ready process, start to do the little rituals to be like, okay, body, it's, it's going to be time to get into bed soon. A bit of journaling before bed. I still do my gratitude list every single night. Three things I'm grateful for. Although I have just recently switched to the resilience project book, their little like notebook at the end of the day, they give you prompters and things like that. Really, really love it. So big shout out to those guys. And usually I'm in bed with a book by like 9.30 and there's just something about that glorious feeling when you just slowly fade away (laughs) that I just love. So that's me prioritizing my sleep, which is going to be a big thing going forward. Going forward into the next year, I was going to try really hard not to be like, it's an end of year show because I feel like we would just get pummeled with that end of year vibe. But I am feeling a little bit of an end of year vibe because I'm really excited for letting the rest of the world kind of chill somewhat around me so that I can do some quiet work on the things I'm really excited about for next year. I'm in the midst of working on this pod for you, all of the different things that I want to do to improve and bring you more and more content next year. So we're not going anywhere next year. In fact, we're going to get bigger and better. I am going to get over my fear of success. I mean, again, with the irony, like who would have thought that success is scarier than failure. Now that I know that there's so many of you out there listening, I'm even more terrified to keep going. So all things going well, the pod will be having an absolute ripper year next year. Give me your feedback. Tell me what you want. I'm going to be creating lots more amazing content for you next year. And yeah, all things going well, hopefully, oh, let's just, let's just back it. Hey, all things going well, you will expect an unemployed and afraid book to be published in the future. It's one of my huge life goals to be a published author and starting with this subject matter that I'm super passionate about is yeah, really exciting. Uh, So I've started the the early plans for that, which is going to be fun, but just going to need to either find a publisher or decide whether or not I'm going to self-publish. I'm going to try really hard not to see my success in somebody else telling me that they think my ideas are good enough. So I very well might be self-publishing. So we'll, we'll see how we go. But yeah, one of my big life goals, I'm not too embarrassed to say as well that I do fantasize about being very Margaret Atwood-esque in my later years, just like typing away and telling stories from some glorious treehouse in the middle of nowhere. I'm also lending my years of experience of random skill building to a glorious woman who I love working with. I'm helping her create engaging podcasts for brands with a really strong focus on diversity and inclusion. So I've been working with her over the last couple of months and we'll continue that into next year. And it's an incredible hustle. I have a lot of fun putting my creativity into the work she's doing. So big shout out to Michelle from The Peers Project. And I'm also exploring the development of an exciting product with someone I really admire and adore. It'll be very aligned to all of the things that we're both passionate about, but it is very early days and I'm deep in the journey of figuring it all out. And I'm feeling all of the things that we talk about in this pod very deeply, all of the fear, all of the self-doubt, all of the, what the fuck am I doing? And how do I do all of these things? And, oh my God, am I going to make an absolute fool out of myself? Or, oh my God, is this just going to suck? Or am I going to like, I don't know. Like, how are the things you worry about? Like, am I going to lose all my money? Am I going to go to court for something? Like, I don't know. It's just all of these things you worry about when you try to start something new. They're all churning in my head, but I'm trying really hard to stay out of my head, into my heart, into my gut, and just pushing forward, knowing that this feels exactly right. This pathway feels exactly right. So I just have to keep going. Action creates information. And of course, I'll continue to make and play with ceramics and art as often as I can, just on a really small level. It's a, it's a hobby that keeps me somewhat out of my head, mainly keeps my hands busy, keeps me away from the computer and that endless to-do list, which often makes me feel like I'm going nowhere. So I'm going to try really hard to invest in, in more of my art practice next year. And that always feels awkward and embarrassing too. Like I'd love to paint, for example, but I'm like, oh, you're probably going to be shit at it. Don't try. But, you know, it's always something calling me towards art. So whenever I need some downtime, I'm going to try really hard to, to work on that. My final thought for the day, wherever you are on your journey, if it's a seed of a thought, like if you don't even have any idea about the business or brand you want to create yet, or if it's a fully fledged business that you are the CEO of just bossing, killing it, 
no matter where you are on the stage, just stay in action, no matter how small, and keep gathering information to learn from. It's my honor to bring you this podcast and the stories of those starting over, creating brands, businesses, and a career that they love. At the end of every episode, you know, I always ask my guest what me and the community, you listening at home can do for them. So I'm answering that as if I was a guest today. I'd like to say thank you for supporting me in this pod for listening. I would love it if you could follow us at Unemployed and Afraid on Instagram, on LinkedIn, where I'm sharing a little bit more these days. I would love you to please give this show a rating and a review. I cannot tell you how much that helps in discovery in people feeling confident about the show in guests looking at the show and thinking about coming on. Oh, I mean, it just helps so much. And sharing with your friends just so we can keep going. It is everything. And this podcast is everything to me. I hope it's helping you. We know whether by choice or by push, starting over is scary as hell. Unemployed and Afraid is your tribe on the pathway through change. So much love to you. Thank you for listening. I hope wherever you are, you're having a beautiful day. Thank you for listening to Unemployed and Afraid, the stories of starting over with your host, me, Kim Curtin. If you liked the episode and are keen to hear more, please hit the follow button and leave a review. And let's keep the conversation going on Instagram at Unemployed and Afraid, where there's more goodies and links to today's show notes. See you there.